Hey everyone, my name is Lordrick Valsote, and for my CS361 final project, I worked on creating optimized TikTok videos using genetic algorithms. In other words, how can I get as many views as possible on my TikTok videos? Now, in case you aren't familiar, TikTok is currently the hottest social media platform in the world, with over 1 billion monthly users worldwide and 150 million in the United States alone. This platform is dominated by short-form content, and I'm interested in seeing what kinds of videos will get me the most views. But why would you even want to optimize your views on TikTok? Is what you might be asking yourself. Well, the most popular TikTok creators have become somewhat of household names, at least among the younger generations. Among the most popular TikTok creators, you have Mr. Beast, Charlie D'Amelio, and Kaby Lame, who has over 162 million followers. Each one of their videos gets millions of views, and the biggest creators on the platform can earn as many as tens of thousands of dollars per video. Now, I'm not expecting to reach that level in the next however long I have to work on this project, but just the idea of fame, wealth, power, doesn't it sound cool? I myself have made an attempt at being a TikTok influencer in the past with very limited success, but today that, that all changes, changes because I'll be harnessing the power of genetic algorithms to maximize my views and become the next big sensation to grace your For You page. But also more generally, understanding what kinds of videos perform the best in the TikTok algorithm can give us insight into how these social media platforms operate. TikTok and other social media platforms like YouTube and Instagram each utilize complex algorithms to determine what videos to serve their users based on which videos the algorithm predicts the users will be most likely to watch. And as social media becomes an increasingly omnipresent figure in daily life, it's important to better understand how exactly platforms like TikTok decide what content we see. But how exactly are we gonna do this? That is, what is the objective function that the TikTok algorithm uses to decide which videos to show to more people? Unfortunately, we have no idea. Outside a select few working at TikTok, the exact machinations of the all-powerful TikTok algorithm are largely a black box to the general user base. There have been a number of studies that attempt to uncover how the TikTok algorithm works exactly, but none of them have been able to uncover the exact formula that TikTok uses to decide which videos to serve to its users. In fact, keeping the algorithm under wraps is a huge cornerstone in the ongoing issues with the TikTok ban in the United States. And so this means we might just be out of luck, unless we try to figure it out ourselves. Online, you'll find lots of supposed guides telling you how to optimize your videos for the TikTok algorithm. They'll tell you what the best time of day to post is, what hashtags to use, what kinds of trending sounds you should use. Whether these guides are 100% legitimate is debatable, but fortunately, I'm taking CS361. And so I'll be using genetic algorithms to try to optimize my TikTok videos. But to figure out how to optimize these, we're first gonna need to declare what our variables are. Since a TikTok video is so multi-dimensional and they're composed of so many different variables, we're gonna have to limit our scope for this. So for the sake of this project, I'll be looking at four variables. Video volume, video length, number of words on screen, and size of the on-screen text. And as for all the other variables, such as the time of posting, the hashtag and captions, and so on, I'll be doing my best to ensure that everything else stays the same as much as possible. And so as a review, genetic algorithms take inspiration from real life biological evolution in which fitter individuals are more likely to pass on their genes to the next generation, and we eventually see individuals become more fit with each generation. For this project, I'll initialize a generation of 20 videos that are gonna be randomized according to the variables that we outlined previously. And I'll also be posting these videos to separate TikTok accounts this means that each video is gonna be going on its own dedicated account so that we don't get confounding from having multiple videos posted to the same account. This does mean that I'm gonna to have to make at least 20 different emails for the sake of this assignment, but what can you do? After we have our videos, we'll calculate a fitness score for each video, which we can just do by seeing how many views the video gets within a certain time frame. And because we are limited for time, I'm gonna let each video go for 48 hours before recording its views. Next, we're gonna choose our elite samples, which are the most fit individuals. And so for this, we can employ truncation selection, where we just take the five videos that got the most views because those are the most fit individuals. And so then these videos become the parents for the next generation. From there, we're gonna to need to consider the chromosome of each sample or each video in this case. The chromosome just outlines the values for each variable that we're considering for this video. So for a given video, its chromosome is gonna tell us what its volume is, how long the video is, and so on. 
Then when we read these parents, we perform a crossover where we essentially just swap values between parents when creating a child. So for example, say we have parent one, which is a video that is eight seconds long and has 50% volume. And we have parent two, which is a video that's nine seconds long and has 100% volume. As a result of crossover, the resulting child could be eight seconds long and have 100% volume, for example. Here, we're gonna be using a uniform crossover, which means that each variable has a 50% chance of being swapped with the other parent when creating a child. But if we're just recombining these videos together, there's a chance that we don't actually improve at all. To solve this, we're gonna introduce genetic mutation. And so here, each variable has a small chance of having a mutation. For example, if a child inherited a video length of 14 seconds from its parents, a mutation may cause it to have a video length of 15 seconds instead, where neither of those parents had a 15 second video length. And so with these mutations, we can introduce new values for the different parameters within a population. For this project, I just assigned a flat mutation rate of 10%, which means that each variable has a 10% chance of being mutated, either increasing or decreasing by one. And so we do this until we have a total of 20 new videos, which becomes our second generation. Then we just repeat this entire process for any number of generations we want. But given the looming deadline, I'm gonna cap this at eight generations. What's actually pretty interesting is that genetic algorithms model pretty well how actual TikTok creators work to improve their content. They may try out a bunch of different videos that differ in topic, style, and format. And by posting those videos, they can see which ones do well and try to replicate and iterate on which ones are performing the best. And for the videos that don't perform well, those creators don't make those kinds of videos again, similar to how our worst performing individuals don't get to breed and create the next generation. This is also why you see a lot of creators make multi-part series with the same kind of video, just with slight variations, because they've found a format that works really well for them. Because if you found a kind of video that performs really well, it would make sense to want to try to replicate and iterate on those ideas so that you can continuously improve your content. And I mean, hopefully we can do the same. And so without further ado, here is one of those videos. Now, to keep these simple, I'm gonna be reusing the same footage for every video, and I'm also gonna be using the same song for every video, which is this one. That way we can limit our confounding variables and really make sure that any effects we see are due to how we're changing the variables that we're looking at. Ideally, as the generations progress, the videos should become more optimized for the TikTok algorithm, meaning that they should be getting more views with each generation. But we'll just have to check back in when those videos are done. All right, so the eighth generation had just finished, so let's take a look at the results. In terms of volume, we see that the best performing videos had a volume around 50% of the maximum, and it tapers off pretty equally in either direction. For video length, we see a peak at around nine seconds and a pretty heavy right skew, which means that longer videos didn't necessarily perform better. For text length, we see a peak at 17 words, also with a pretty heavy right skew. This means that as we increase the number of words on screen, the videos performed worse. And for text size, we see a trend towards 100% text size, although our actual peak is at 80%. And while we do see a trend here, the skew isn't as heavy as it is for video length and number of words on screen. And for the highest performing video, which means the video that got the most views, we had one in the eighth generation with a 50% volume, a video length of nine seconds, 17 words on screen, and a text size of 80%. This video got a total of 1,325 views. Here is that video. Now, while our best performing video did do pretty well, I am far from the TikTok stardom that I initially envisioned. But as expected, we see that with each generation, our views increase. Now, while we only did this with eight generations, it's possible that with a more prolonged optimization and more generations, the views could increase even more than what we see now. But even just with the optimizations we were able to achieve in the time that we had, making videos according to these parameters could offer more success on the platform. And to see that in action, you can follow me on my personal TikTok account where I plan to make use of these findings for my future content. Because we were able to optimize pretty effectively using genetic algorithms, the hope is that by making more videos in the future on my personal account that have variables in line with the best performing videos from what we saw in our optimization, I can have more success on the platform and hopefully, hopefully one day become a TikTok star. That's all for me for today, so thank you for watching and be sure to hit like and follow for more.